The fact is, this was a horrible, one-sided deal that should have never, ever been made. It didn't bring calm. It didn't bring peace. And it never will. But it did bring a lot of money to the Iranian regime. President Trump telling the world he is pulling the U.S. out of the so-called Iran nuclear deal that he says will never bring peace. Here now is Art Laffer, former Reagan economic advisor and Laffer Associates chairman on what all this means to our economy. How does it, do we take a hit from this, Art? I don't think we take a hit from the Iran deal. I don't really see the major economic impact of the deal. It's really a political military deal and not really well, economic. Let, let, me, let me put one to you, which is that Boeing was, was salivating, thinking about all of the planes that it was going to sell. And specifically, uh, part of the deal does prohibit any U.S. company, and it, and it mentions uh, companies that make commercial airliners in particular. So Boeing could, could miss out on about $20 billion in sales of aircraft. Oh, that for sure. It'll hit individual companies. It'll hit all sorts of stuff like that. But given that Iran will be trading with the rest of the world, uh, that should be arbitraged across different countries, and it won't affect the terms of trade. It won't expect uh, prices. Well, it may a, affect that's a good Boeing, question, affect though, because there are questions that uh, Senator Schumer already has said that there will be secondary sanctions. That is, European nations who have gotten used to trading well, over the past will. couple of months will then be sanctioned by the United States. Well, if we do that and we finally can get Europe to join with us on the sanctions in Iran, then it might have some real ramifications, especially on oil and, and the oil markets and other yeah. products like the airlines as well. But so far, I don't think it's a big deal economically. It's a really big deal well, politically the, and militarily. It's market, a huge deal. The market agrees with you, by the way. The market basically was flat today. <laughs> uh, they panicked a little bit at the beginning, midday, but then once they heard the president talk, nothing much happened. Let's talk about some really positive news, which is I, that... There's a lot of really that, positive well, news let's, out there, Let's David. talk first about what happened with the budget, because everybody's talking about deficits. In April, we had the largest budget surplus we have ever had before, $218 billion. Now, I know April is when all of the, the tax money has come in. A lot of companies put a little extra in, thinking that they get more out at the end of the year. Uh, but does that just show how booming this economy is? Well, it surely is an indicator, and I don't want to say it this way, David, but neener, neener, neener. I, I told you, you told it would us so. I'm sorry. I just had to do that. But, you know, it's a very Was nice indication. Was that for indication. Paul Krugman, by the way? <laughs> who? Was that for Paul Was, Krugman? I don't know who Paul Krugman yeah. is. <laughs> I'd never heard of the guy, uh, but it, and, and he sh she shouldn't be known. But when you look at this, it's the first little signs of something doing pretty well. The state and local stuff, David, I don't know if you saw that, but that's something that I've been working on for years and years and 30 years, and that's where a lot of the revenue feedback comes in through state and local government revenues, and they're popping up, especially yeah. in the most damaged states. I mean, like places like Connecticut and New York and California, yeah. where they have progressive taxes, a little bit of economic growth really piles in on the revenues, and that's wonderful for the country. And I'm very pleased with the way things are going today. They may reverse themselves next month. Right. Who knows? But today, I'm very pleased right. with these well, One thing that reports. hasn't reversed itself is the thirst for spending inside the Beltway. Well, that's true. And that's the, president, true. the president is trying something, but just a, a little bit. He's, he's doing this, this so-called rescission move, which allows the, yeah. the executive to pull back on some of what has, has been proposed to spend. It's only $15 billion. Now, I say only $15 billion. That's a lot of change for most of us, uh, but in the in the the grand scheme of the budget, that's nothing. Yeah, that's very good too. I mean that that used to be there used to be something called impounding funds right. historically. Now that was taken away from Nixon, uh, was removed because the impounded funds were there because at the end of World War II we had all these funds set up to build weapons, and once they surrendered, the need for weapons wasn't anymore, so they had impounding. This is sort of what he's doing right here, and that makes a lot of sense, and you can save some real dollars on that. I want us to go back in and remove some of the spending and dramatically remove some of the spending, not for the poor or the minorities that disenfranchised. That I want to do in three years when we get the growth going. Because once people have good full-time jobs, they don't need the welfare payments, the food stamps, the school right. lunch. All of those are not necessary when we have a boom. But right now, I'd like to see a lot of the waste that's put in that program, those programs yeah. and brought right back out. It just makes no sense. By the way, already we have seen a, a tremendous diminution of, of the amount of money we're spending on food stamps, partly as a result of the fact that people have oh, more Oh, and unemployment jobs. benefits have to be way, way down, yeah. too. I haven't looked at the numbers. But 
but the, these are mostly done through straight state funds with transfers right. from the federal government. But those numbers have to be way, way down yeah. as well. But the one I love, David, Quickly. is revenues are rising with the tax cut. <laughs> There's a curve that relates that. Do you know what that curve is? Have you it's, heard of it? Uh, <laughs> named after, it's not named after Paul Krugman, I can tell you it's that. It's a Krugman curve. You got it? It's a Paul We're talking Krugman about the curve. Laffer curve, ladies and gentlemen. That's what this guy's been talking about that. for decades. Everybody knows that. No, I don't Laffer. get very often that tout and pat myself I on the know. back, but today I feel very good. good Thank deal. you. You're entitled to it, Art Laffer. Thank, Thank you very you. much for being here. Appreciate <laughs> Lovely it. Lovely being with you guys. Bye. <laughs>